Hi there everybody and welcome back. In this tutorial, I'm going to take you through a different type of equilibrium constant calculation. It's called KP. It looks pretty similar. It's got the products and the reactants feature that the KC calculation has got that we've seen before, but it only applies to gaseous equilibrium. And the reason we have this separate calculation when we're looking at gaseous equilibrium is because the concentration of gases can be quite difficult to measure. But there is a directly proportional relationship between concentration and pressure, and so we use a pressure-based equilibrium constant calculation when we have a gaseous equilibrium, and we call it Kp. The only problem is though, as you can already see, we're going to end up with pressure data over here that gets used in our calculation and we haven't done a massive amount of work on pressure throughout the course of the chemistry A level. In fact, we're going to look at a lot of new terms. We're going to look at how these are partial pressures which are calculated like so and in order to calculate these partial pressures we're going to need the total pressure and something called the X of gas. Well I can tell you that that stands for mole fraction there's another term we've not come across before, so we're going to have to go back over here and we're going to have to figure out what mole fraction means and how we calculate that before we can put any of these numbers together to calculate a Kp for an equilibrium mixture. That might sound like a lot of work, but when this comes up in the exam, it's worth a lot of marks. And it's definitely something that you want to have under your belt going into the summer exam season. So let's start off right over here at the very beginning with what does mole fraction mean and how are we going to convert that down the line into calculating a Kp for our equilibrium mixture. Okay, so like I said, in order to calculate Kp, we need to know the partial pressures of our individual gases from the equilibrium mixture. And in order to calculate the partial pressures of our individual gases from that equilibrium mixture, we need to know our mole fractions, which is what this means just here, of all of our individual components of that equilibrium mixture. All of the gases that are going to be involved, we need to know something called their mole fraction. So where does this all come from? Well, if we had a fixed and known temperature and pressure, and let's say we had two totally different gases, let's say we had CO2 and let's say we had O2. Well, if we had them held at the same temperature and pressure, the same volume of each of those gases, even though they are totally different from each other, they would have the same number of moles. And that relationship there between volume and moles is where this all comes from. Our equilibrium is one big gaseous mixture. And with this calculation using moles, the mole fraction tells us what proportion the volume of one gas is compared to that of the total equilibrium mixture. And so it tells us how much of our total gaseous volume is actually from one particular gas component. And if you do it for all of them, you should end up with one overall. So all your mole fractions, once you've calculated them, should add up to one because you are looking at what fraction of the volume, what fraction of the total moles or total volume you are looking at with each individual component from the equilibrium mixture. Now, in order to calculate our mole fraction then, in order to find out those individual proportions of all the different gases and how they contribute to the overall picture, I need the moles at equilibrium of each individual gas. Now, the way you calculate moles at equilibrium is exactly like you did with the Kc calculations. There's no difference there. It's not actually requiring any use of this. It's a separate skill. And there's a quick tutorial video on that if you want to have a look at that before going any further. You can either find that at the end of this video or check the cards by clicking the little I to the top right hand corner now and you'll find a link to the video there. Once you've got the individual equilibrium moles of the gas component that you're after, you then need to divide that by the total gas moles. So find out the moles of everything at equilibrium, add them all up, that's your total gas mole value, and then one at a time, it takes ages, 
but one at a time go through all the different gaseous components, products and reactants of your equilibrium mixture and do the moles of that particular component at equilibrium divided by the total gas moles. And you'll end up with a load of values that when you add them up should equal one if you've done it correctly. And then you've got your mole fractions. Once you've got your mole fractions, which would be X of whatever the gas is, so like X of CO2, you're ready to find out the P of CO2 because that would be the partial pressure. And when you've got all your partial pressures, you're ready to jump into the KP expression. Your partial pressure step is easier to calculate, but leave yourself loads of space in the exam. You often get a full page for this kind of thing because this takes up more space than you expect. The partial pressure of each gas component, products and reactants needs to be calculated separately. And the way you do it is you take your mole fraction and you multiply that by the total pressure. Think about what partial pressure means. If you've got a total gaseous equilibrium mixture, each individual gaseous component of that equilibrium mixture is going to exert a certain amount of pressure. This calculation lets you find out what part of the total pressure is from each individual gas component. So if I have the mole fraction of CO2, which is part of the overall equilibrium mixture, I would then do the mole fraction of the CO2 gas, multiply by the total pressure, and I get my part of the pressure, that is the CO2, that is the O2, the N2, whatever gases are involved. Your pressure value here will come up in a weird set of units sometimes. You could get pascals, you could get kilopascals. I've even seen megapascals get used in the exam. And you might be thinking now, how do you convert from megapascals to pascals? You don't need to know how. You don't even need to know how to convert from atmospheres. Whatever the units are here for pressure, and you will be given this normally, unless it's a different style of question, you will be given the total pressure of the equilibrium in the exam question. Leave the units alone. Don't change them, unless the question is telling you to. Don't change them just out of habit. You don't have to. I know that for the ideal gas equation, when we cover that in chemistry, you have to use pascals. But you don't have to use a certain type of pressure unit when you're building up to a KP calculation. So please don't feel you need to do anything with that. Leave them alone, it's perfectly fine. And your partial pressure then is just quoted in whatever units the total pressure was. And that's it. So you've done your mole fraction for every gaseous component of your equilibrium. You've then done the partial pressure for every gaseous component of your equilibrium. You then need to do your KP expression setup. And it's products, reactants, make sure that all your coefficients like 2CO2, that means you need P of CO2 squared. So you still use those coefficients, they become the powers of. It's just like KC where everything's multiplied across the top, everything's multiplied across the bottom, and then you just put your numbers in and you'll get a KP value. The way you calculate your units, well, it's the same as calculating the units of KC, except instead of loads of moles per decimeter cubed, you've got loads of whatever units were used here for the total pressure. So you could end up with a weird set of units like kilopascals to the power of minus one, that's perfectly fine, don't worry about it. The main bit of work here is going all the way from moles at equilibrium into that KP expression. Leave yourself lots of room, do it in columns if you get an open exam space with lots of labels of what you're doing because you also might wanna go back and check your numbers, so write everything out. Don't scrimp on the detail, don't put loads of things in brackets, oh, I've done this. Mark schemes will do that, but they're not answering the question, are they? They're just making sure people can mark what you've done. You've got to make sure that everything is done nice and clearly so the examiner can deliver you credit if they can see that you've done the right stages, even with an early error. I hope that gives you an impression of what you need to do with your data in order to calculate a KP equilibrium constant value for your equilibrium. Until next time, happy revising.
thanks very much for watching. Click the links on screen now to subscribe and see more of our videos on Module 5 of the OCRA specification.